Brilliant students, it's Prof G, and in this lesson we're going to attach an LED light and a resistor to a breadboard, connect it to a Raspberry Pi Pico, and use CircuitPython to get things blinking. Let that big learning shine on! Now many beginning electronics tutorials start with blinking an LED on a breadboard as one of the first lessons, but we've gone through a bunch of lessons before arriving here. What gives? Well, a few things. Blinking a single one-color LED on a breadboard isn't that cool. There are lots of other things that folks often want in their final builds. Animating full-color LED strips, using motors, working with audio, working with other sensors. So we covered those first. These aren't the drawings you're looking for. Also, attaching an LED to a breadboard requires a resistor. And if you noticed in our earlier lessons, modern electronic components are usually built so that you don't have to worry about adding additional resistors. So the resistor gets in the way of some early big learning wins. But we're about to use a single LED in an upcoming project, so I figured this is a good time to introduce things. Now, I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter red LED bulb. You can use regular size bulbs if you've got them, and a 100 ohm resistor. If you've got one of the common 220 ohm resistors, you can go ahead and use that too, but in the earlier playlist on Ohm's Law, I discussed why I chose this resistor. Remember, resistors with a larger ohm value will dim the bulb, so if your resistor's got too high of an ohm value, you probably won't see anything from your LED. Now we're going to attach one leg of the LED to the signal pin. I'm going to choose GP15 on my Pico, this one here, and the other leg goes to any ground pin. Now, LED bulbs have polarity. That means one leg needs to be used for the signal. That's called the anode leg. It's usually the longer leg. Sometimes in diagrams, the anode leg is shown with a bend in it. Oftentimes, you'll see it illustrated with a plus attached to it. And that other leg is the cathode. It's often shown with a minus symbol, and that one heads to ground. If you reverse the polarity, your LED is not going to work. Long leg anode heads to signal. Short leg, cathode, heads to ground. Now, as mentioned in our Ohm's Law lesson, the Pico provides too much juice for the LED bulb, so we need a resistor. If we don't add a resistor, the bulb might burn out or it won't last as long. Now, where do we put the resistor? Between the ground pin and the LED? Or between the signal pin and the LED? Well, actually, it doesn't matter. What we want to do is reduce the current. That's the number of electrons during a period that pass through the LED. And if the resistor's on either side of the LED, it'll slow the current down so we only get the expected number of electrons passing through the LED. Think of the resistor as causing a traffic jam. It doesn't matter where the traffic jam is, only a certain number of electrons, think of them as cars, get through in a period of time. Also note that resistors don't have polarity, so it doesn't matter which direction you plug it in as long as your connections are set up properly. By the way, the bands and colors of a resistor provide a code to calculate the ohm value for a resistor. I wish they just wrote the number on it and you could look at it with a magnifying glass. As someone with really bad eyesight, I don't find the bands and the colors very useful. I think some of the colors are really close to one another and they're hard to read, but you can find a number of resistor code calculators online. Here's one from DigiKey. Just select the number of bands on the resistor, then set the color for each band, and it'll tell you what the ohm value of that resistor is. You can also enter the number for the resistance value here, and it should show you the bands for what should be on a resistor of that value. You can also use a tool called a multimeter to check for resistance. When the multimeter is set to the ohm setting, just touch the black ground probe to one end and the red probe to the other, and you should see the reading show up. This resistor shows about 101 ohms. This is a 100 ohm resistor. Nobody's perfect. 101 and change is close enough to 100 for LED work. Now I'll show my resistor attached between the signal pin and the positive or anode leg, this longer leg, but you can attach it to the shorter leg if you'd like. Now the code we'll write to control the LED is super simple. An LED is a digital output device, so we need to import our digital I.O. library to extend Python to work with that kind of device. We also need to use the board and time libraries in our code, so we'll import those too. And next we're gonna create a digital output object on the GP or digital signal pin that we've attached the anode or positive leg of the bulb to. Now I'm gonna call my object LED, and I'm gonna create that by setting LED equal to digital I.O., this library here, dot, that library's digital in out class, note the capitalization, and I'm gonna pass in the signal pin, which is board.gp15. And you might notice that you did something similar to this when you set up buttons in a previous lecture. Buttons are digital input devices, so we also use the digital IO library. Now this next line is gonna be different from buttons because an LED light is a digital output device. 
So we're going to set our LED object's direction property by stating LED dot direction equals to digital IO, our library dot capital D direction dot and in all caps output. So while buttons are digital input devices, they send signals into the Pico. LEDs are digital output devices. The Pico sends signals out to the LED, turn on or turn off. Now, how do we turn the light on or off? We just set its dot value property to true to turn it on or false to turn it off. These are single color bulbs, no color setting here. And while these two lines set the LED value to true or to false on two separate lines, you can also use a single line to set the LED dot value to the opposite of what it currently is. Just put a not out in front of it like this. LED dot value equals not LED dot value. So if value is true, it'll be not true, which is false. And if it's false, it'll be not false, which is true. So let's code this up. So I'll start with a comment, blink an LED on a Pico, and I'll import board comma time comma digital IO. Then I'll set up my LED, calling it LED, setting that equal to digital IO dot digital in out. That's with capital D, capital I, and capital O. And between parens, I pass in board dot GP15. That's the pin that's attached to the anode leg of my LED. Then I set the direction property of my digital output device with LED dot direction equal to digital IO dot capital D direction dot output in all caps. Then we'll just create a while true loop that'll flash the LED light on or off every quarter second. So we'll start with while true, capital T true, colon, and we'll use that one liner by saying LED.value equals not LED.value. And below this, we'll just enter time.sleep, passing in 0.25. Then let's open the serial console, and we'll save this as code.py to our circuit pi volume. And look at that, we're flashing away. Now, for some reason, things aren't flashing. Always make sure that your LED lights, your resistor, and your wires are all connected properly. It's really easy to get these wrong. Those little holes are really close together, and the legs are kind of long, so sometimes they get bent, and they look like they're going one way, but they're not. It's one of the reasons why I prefer not to teach with LED bulbs unless we actually need them for a project. Now, I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school drive as Blink LED on a Pico. Then I'll close this and open up code.py on my CircuitPy volume so I don't erase the code that I just saved. But hopefully, Pythonista, you feel that there was lots of solid big learning in this lesson. We talked LED lights, and now we know about the anode, the cathode, and LED light polarity. We talked resistors and showed it doesn't matter where we put our resistor as long as it's in a properly wired circuit. We showed the band color codes for a resistor and a tool from DigiKey that can help you calculate the ohm value for a resistor if you can see its bands, or you can enter the ohm value and see what the band should look like on a resistor of that value. We also showed how you can check the resistor's ohm value by using a multimeter, and we wrote the super simple code to flash our LED. Feel good about those skills, Pythonista? There's more goodness to come. Continue to hack.